Hello Python programmers so in this video i am going to list down my top 5 picks of kinter projects for beginners now these are 5 projects for beginners actually i have 19 projects and i have divided them into 3 categories first is for beginners which have 5 videos then we have intermediate and then we have advanced playlist so this will be like a three part playlist first part is this video and rest two will be uploaded very soon now the criteria of classification was based on the complexity of the kinter gui like if there is a logic in the gui if there is styling in the gui so all the things are counted so that i can allot them their specific category okay so let's start off with our first project Hello Python programmers. So in this video, I'm going to show you that I can create this beautiful looking calendar using Python. So first of all, let's see what is the system requirement or what are the packages required to create this project. You need only two packages. First is Kinter to create this GUI and second is Calendar to do everything else. Okay. So actually you don't even need to install both of the packages because they come pre-installed with the vanilla python installation so you all are ready to go now so let's get started okay so now we are into our editor let's first import our required libraries from Kinter import star or import all this should be Kinter then we'll import our calendar package okay then first we'll create a variable which will uh, store our calendar data calendar dot calendar and here you can write the year for which you want uh, the whole calendar you can even write a specific month or a specific week or there are many operations that can be performed by varying the parameters i'll provide the link for the documentation of this book of this package you can go through that link and just explore this package a little bit so uh, i'll simply create the project for you so let's uh, first so let's create the window what is it going to take a uh, root dot geometry to define that what is uh, the geometry of our Kinter window okay so if you are a regular viewer of my channel then you must be familiar with all these Kinter commands because I guess we have worked on more than five to six projects on Kinter so you must be familiar with these commands but I'll still explain them for all those who are new here so here we are creating the kinter window variable then we are defining the geometry here this should be a dot here root dot geometry and the size is 500 into 600 height and width and then we'll define the title of uh, the window let's say uh, calendar okay now let's create our first label which will just simply say calendar so this will be a label and just a second root and the text here is calendar 
and the BG color or the background color here is dark gray and then the font uh, the font style here can be uh, anything but I like Times New Roman so I'll write here Times and the size let's say 28 and let this be bold okay this should be inside inverted commas and let's close our brackets so now we have created our label let's build this or implement this into our kinter window add the row first and add the column first now let's configure our kinter window to be of the color white so this should be be a background background should be white here okay back ground should be white here then we'll create a second label which will display uh, I guess this L is also capital okay now these mistakes happens a lot and uh, okay now the text here is this text variable here let me give some space so that it's more visible to you all okay so this is the variable text here and then the font okay so this is very important here you have to use only one type of font which is consoles now uh, I will also show that it, what will happen if you don't use uh, this type of uh, sorry this uh, font but uh, for now let's take the consoles font only now let's create this into the row second and to the column uh, first and we also need to provide some padding so that uh, it has some good difference from the edge of our window then we'll simply close our main loop okay so I guess there is no error let me close this one so let's first save this and then run this and there is an error calendar is not defined okay because it should be calendar this should be a let's run this again and there you can see uh, but there is a problem yeah this is what I was talking about the font problem but uh, it's happening again there you can see the Monday column is uh, it's having nothing and it's going beyond the limit of the month so so actually it should be consolas this is a there should be an s here let's save this and, and run this and there you go okay so now it's working fine and this is what i was talking about the importance of this font i don't know how it works and what is the difference between all the other fonts and this one but uh, definitely it's working and actually I searched a lot about 
why this problem is happening let me show you once again that what will happen if we change this into another type of font let's say there's times so there you can see this is not properly arranged there you can see this is not properly arranged i don't know why this is happening and and what is the difference between two font but definitely i focus more on the result consolas okay now let's run this again and there you can see perfectly working so this is the calendar package for you i will provide the link about how you can explore this package you can even find uh, the leap year and many other things from the documentation of this package so this is it for this video i hope you like it and i'll meet you in my next project bye bye okay so before we move ahead let's have a word from our today's sponsor this video is sponsored by an academy are you a student or a working professional who is looking for a great career in software development then you have to think about these aspects like what's trending in the industry and the kind of questions being asked in the interview what's the thought process behind the architecture of great applications like google amazon zomato and ola and how to improve your core chef ranking so to achieve all these goals what you need to do is you need to go to anacademy.com/goals/career as a software developer i'll provide this link in the description and first let's talk about the host or the mentors of these courses now these hosts are working with some of the top companies like google amazon to name a few they are seven star coders on core chef and are industry experts with years of experience and what they'll do is they'll walk you through their own industry experience and interact with a lot of guests like hr and industry leaders of top companies where they'll ask questions raised by you now this was about the mentors let's go to the live sessions and see what they have to offer for you now in these live episodes you'll get an opportunity to ask tech hr about top 20 questions and industry leaders directly about their recruitment process in startups and multinational companies what is the eligibility and how to apply and how they build such great projects and not only this you can participate in mock interviews and learn courses on programming languages blockchain and crypto cloud computing tech aspects of digital marketing data analysis and many more have you ever thought about how these frontline apps like zomato paytm google pay amazon flipkart and pacto were made in first place what was the thought process we have a show to answer all of these questions now how is this show different from the videos that you will find on youtube in this show anuj will discuss the architecture breakdown of popular apps and learners will get to see how these apps were made and how these apps work now you must be thinking that you have to pay a hefty price for courses like this but no you have to pay 999 rupees per month to get access to all of these courses but wait there is more if you use my code harshit roy you will get an additional 10% off let me show you you need to just write harshit roy and click apply and you will get an instant 100 rupees off so all the links will be provided in the description definitely check them out and let's move on to our next project hello python programmers so in this video i'm going to show you that how you can create a python program which will display the current weather condition of a city so this is our gui which will be created using our program now you can select from these list of cities you can add as many number of cities as you want uh, so i'll select lucknow and press this button and there you can see the current weather condition of lucknow is printed here it is light intensely drizzle the the, the temperature is 23 degree celsius humidity is 100% and the wind speed is 1.5 so this is the weather condition of lucknow currently so let's see what is the system requirement for this project 
first of all you need to install request library so just open the CMD and write pip install requests press enter and this library will be installed for you now the second task is to create the account on openweathermap.org I'll provide the link below you need to just sign in to this uh, website or this API service let me sign in here and after you have signed in you will land to this page click on API option and then you can see a bunch of API services here almost mostly are paid like these all are paid available for professional and enterprise account and uh, available for developer professional and enterprise account so mostly of them are paid but some of them are not paid also like the api which we are gonna work in this project which, which is this current weather data api so let's click on the api docs so let's scroll down a little bit make sure that this is degree celsius now we'll come under this heading by city name and select the second link in the example of api calls now now you can see the current weather condition of london so we'll just remove the samples from here and copy this link so let's open our editor so first of all we'll import our request library import request then we'll import enter then let's first create a variable which I will explain later let's say weather with no parameters provided and then we'll copy this link okay actually it should be a string so make it a string so before working on the API part let's first create a Kinta window window is equal to TK make sure that this T is capital and this K is small then let's define the geometry now let's create the variable in which all the city names will be stored city name list as we know this is a string variable make sure that this s is capital and this v is capital now let's create a option variable which will add the drop down make sure that this O is capital and this M is capital so option menu now let's grid our options or this variable into our Kinter window now let's create a button let's say b1 button make sure that this b is capital
and the command or the action this button will trigger is our weather function now let's grid and also let's close the main loop of our kinter window window dot main loop okay so now let's get back to our weather function and let me explain you this URL now this is the weather map website uh, URL here this weather map dot org slash data slash 2.5 and this query is equal to london slash uk which is the city name this is your app id after you have created your account now let me show you if you go to this sign in and then and then you go to api keys you will find your api here this is your api actually this is my api your api will be different which will display here so as in we want to take the city name from the user we will provide two curly braces here q is equal to and then we will format them format equal to the variable city which will store the city name so let's create our city variable city is equal to now we are taking the input using this uh, drop down list box so i'll simply write city is equal to city slash list box dot get this will extract the option which the user has selected uh, this should be a full stop it will extract the option which the user has selected in a drop down menu so this will format the city here now let's create a variable res which will actually get the data from this URL the URL and then we'll convert this data into JSON format now let's take a quick look at the data which we have got this is the data actually this is the final output data which we'll get after this uh, output dot res dot json this is the json data now you can see that we have certain key value pairs here like the coordinates here have longitude value as this and latitude value as this now under the weather key we have id key and the main key the description key and the icon key then under the base we have station under the mains we have temperature pressure humidity and same for all so now let's focus on what are the quantities that we want to display to the user first of all i want to display the description like here we have light intensely drizzle then we want to display the temperature here then the pressure and the humidity so we'll display these four values so let's create a variable for them let me show you why because under the weather key 
me minimize this a bit okay so under the weather key here at the zeroth index there you can see this is the first value this is the first value of the list this is a list and then this is the first value and the python slicing starts from zero it's like zero one two now at the zeroth position under the key description so now here we got the weather status now let's do the same for all Okay, so now we have extracted the data from our JSON. Let's create the labels which will display this into a Kinta GUI. So let me show you one uh, status. Make sure that this L is capital. So let's do this for all of them. Okay, so now let's configure our labels or let's insert the text into our labels. We'll come back to a function. Now let's do this for all of our variables. Okay, so now let me save this, go back to your folder, shift plus mouse right click, open powershell window here, write python, file name 1.py and we have an error, b is not defined, b.grid, uh, because the variable in which we have stored our button is different, which is b1. Now these type of error happens a lot with me. Now let me select Lucknow. And we are getting an error. This should be, uh, it must be string not an integer. Okay. So let me change this into a string. The humidity is also an integer so let's change this also to string 
and when speed is also an integer so let's change this to string let me save this again close this one run it again select the city and select Delhi if I press enter then here you can see that our program is displaying the current uh, weather condition of this city so this was a small but really fun project and i hope you like it and i'll meet you in my next lecture bye bye hello python programmers so in this video i'm going to show you that how you can create a digital clock is using python which will look somewhat like this now I know this is not a very attractive looking clock <laughs> but uh, this is a really good practice for our beginners and uh, you can really test things on such small projects so that you can polish your skills. Now the modules used in this project are Kinter and Time. So so let me show you that how you can install Kinter. Just go to the command prompt. You can write cmd here. Write pip install tkinter. It should be tkinter. Press enter. For you the downloading process will start. It is already installed for me so I'll close this one and I'll close this one also and now with this being said and all the introduction given let's get started with the programming so let me import our required libraries first first is this then from Kinter should be Kinter import star or import all then we'll import our time library which will be used to get the current time now we'll create a variable let's call it times because the time is the name of a module so I don't wanna name any function or class which is related to that or which is exact that word now we'll create a variable current time current time time dot strf time and we want the R. make sure that this is capital and your minute and your second so this command will give you the current R minute and second which is according to your systems time okay so now we'll configure our clock configure text is equal to now the variable current time and the clock will will change after every 200 microseconds we want to execute our times function now let's get to our GUI part or Kinter part we'll create a variable which will store our Kinter window we'll define the geometry or the size of our window geometry let's say 500 
to 250 you can really experiment with these values and just create your own project now we'll create a variable called clock which will store our label now here we are going to use three labels first to show the time second to mention that what is the hour what is the minute and what is the second and the last one will be at the top digital clock so these are the three labels which we are gonna create now let's create the first one to display our current time root now I'm gonna define the fonts it will be times which stands for times new roman it should be bold and the bg color or the color of our text will be white so let's grid or implement this label into our Kinter window dot grid sorry grid and uh, row is equal to second and column should also be second pad y is the padding between the two labels let's say 25 and pad x is equal to 100 now you must know that what is the y-axis and what is the x-axis x-axis is the uh, horizontal one and the y-axis is the vertical one so 25 padding from the x-axis and 100 padding from your sorry 25 padding from your y-axis and 100 padding from your x-axis after that we want to call our function which is times we'll simply call this then we are gonna create a variable for a label for our digital clock we'll name it dg sweet little name label um, root The text which we are gonna write here is digital clock. I want the font to be Times. I love Times New Roman 24 size and it should be bold. Now I'm gonna grid or implement them. After creating the PPT for my college seminars, I'm very accustomed to name the fonts as Times New Roman. <laughs> so Now let's create our last uh, label which is for the R minute and second notations. We'll name it as no day label and uh, once again root which is the variable in which our Kinter window is saved. The text here is R some spaces minutes some spaces and then seconds some more spaces uh, the font times as you know my habit 
a bit smaller because our college teacher are not gonna check this <laughs> and then we're gonna grid our nota row is equal to 3 and column is equal to 2 so I'm gonna close this one we are gonna close our window let me save this and let's run it and TK is not defined because it should be capital T and my program running in the first time not possible not possible because I haven't saved it let's run it again so here we go in the second try my program run and uh, we can see this beautiful clock which says that this is a digital clock as you can see the current hour minute and seconds and the notation of our minute second so this was a short video and not very impressive project but clearly you can create create this project to just polish your skills and uh, work more on the GUI projects and work on some real life projects so this is it for this video and if you want some more GUI related projects like database management or somewhat like a web scrapping project then the links are popping above on your screen click on them and I'll meet you there bye bye hello python programmers so in this video i'm gonna show you that how you can create a gui world clock using python so first of all let me show you that what will be the final output so there you can see this is our gui world clock now i know that this is not a beautiful looking clock but i have focused more on the functioning of this gui and placements of the components okay now i know you can work on a more beautiful GUI I trust you guys okay so first of all let's see that what are the packages required for this project we need Kinter to create the GUI pretty obvious if you are a regular viewer of this channel you should have guessed that I have used Kinter for GUI and we'll be using PYTZ to extract the current time of different time zones and we have used our date time package to convert this data into exact date time data type okay so we don't need to install kinter but we do need to install pytz so open the cmd and just write pip install pytz press enter and this package will be installed for you for me this is already installed you don't need to install date time you don't need to install kinter because it comes pre-installed with any distribution of python whether you are using anaconda or you have downloaded python from its website okay so this is done let's go to our editor to write our code Okay, so now we are into our editor. So our first task is to import the required library, which is Kinter, PYTZ, date, time, and time. Okay. Okay, so now we have imported the required libraries. Date time will be used to convert the data extracted from the PYTZ package into date time data type, which then be printed into our GUI. Okay. PYTZ will be used to extract the current time from different time zones. Okay. Kinta will be used to create our GUI and time package will be used to run our clock function continuously. Now, if you have already watched our previous video in which we have created a stopwatch or a digital clock, then you must be familiar with how we are going to use this time package. Okay. If you haven't watched them, I would suggest you to watch them first but 
if you are rigid on staying in this video then i'll explain you in this video also okay okay so first of all let's create our kinter ui so first we'll create a kinter instance with the name of root and then we'll define the geometry the size uh, which is let's say uh, 300 uh, by 250 let's say we'll check that okay then as we know our clock has three components first is the country name second is the clock itself and third is the label of our minute and second okay so we'll create three labels here okay so now we have created our three labels let's close our main loop so root dot main loop let's save this and run our program we are getting an error let me see what that error is uh font is not defined because it, there, there should be an equal to sign here there should be an equals equal to sign here also okay so let's run this and okay we have created our gui now let me assign some text here first so that we can see whether it's working or not let's assign any random text uh, to just check whether our components are at the right place or not okay so i just uh, missed the comma here okay 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 so let's run this okay so our gui are exactly at the right place but our gui is not of the right size so let's take this to be 500 and yeah now it is good okay so what we have to do is we need to copy this uh, these three components three times more and then we have to change the coordinates now first of all let me take some time to explain you that what is happening here we have created three labels first label will show the name of the country okay so we are using this label class here first parameter is root which is the gui variable second is the text that it will display now we'll create a function above which will write the name but just to show you i'm writing the text here also okay and then third parameter is the font now it is times new roman size is 20 and it is bold okay same we are doing for our clock also first is root second is text which will be the time third is font times new roman size is 25 and it's bold and the third is nota now i don't know i have why i have chosen this name nota but whatever it is first parameter is root the text is the label of hours minute and second and it is of the size 10 okay then we have placed them at their respective positions now as you already know you can play along with this value you are free to do everything okay now let's copy this for four times first we'll create our gui then we'll create the function which will write the time and the country name okay so i have copied this so just a second let me rename and change the positions also like this is placed at x axis 30 and y axis 5 so just imagine the kinter gui as the graph and then at the x of 30 unit and y of 5 unit we'll place this label and then at x axis 10 and y axis 40 we'll place this clock variable at x 10 y 80 we'll place the nota label okay so let me do the same for others also now make sure you change the names of the variable okay okay so perfect okay so let me explain you that how i have chosen the coordinates for these labels so first we have taken the value of x30 and y5 for our name 
of the country okay x 10 y 40 for our clock and x 10 y 80 for our hour minute and second level now just add 300 on the x axis because we are moving 300 units to the right hand side this is why we'll add 300 to the x axis okay so 330 310 and 310 okay and now we are moving downwards so what we'll do is we'll add 100 to y axis the x will remain the same we'll add 100 to y axis so 5 will become 105 40 will become 140 and 80 will become 180 and same will happen for this also it's moving both on x axis and y axis so this is how i have placed the components on our gui okay so now we have created our gui let's go on to the function which will extract the current time of different countries and then display into our gui okay so first let me remove these text this was just to show you okay okay so now what we'll do is we'll uh, create times function and now let's create the times function here also so times function this function will be called after these labels are created now first of all we'll write the values which will be changed inside the function so this is clock the clock for our first label so clock dot config and the text that will be changed will be a variable let's say uh, local time okay we'll create this variable just wait for a second okay so this will be the change of time and then what also we have to change is the name so name will become uh, name sorry name dot config and the text that will be displayed for the first name variable is India okay now let me show you that how this PYTZ uh, package works so what I'll do is I'll comment out all this part so that I can show you okay so what we'll do is the first thing is we'll create the PYTZ instance for that specific time zone so we'll call pytz time zone uh, it should be time zone and then we have to write the name of the time zone okay so first we want for uh, let's say asia kolkata k should be capital so kolkata okay and then let's save the time in a local uh, let's say time variable is equal to date time dot now of this home variable okay so first of all we have defined the time zone for which we want the current time and then using the date time dot now we are extracting the exact time okay now let's create a current time variable and then let's convert this uh, time extracted into the correct date time format so strf time the first parameter here will be uh, r this should be inside a string now just wait for a second don't be confused because i'll explain you after i have written the code okay so just wait for a second there you can see that this is the current time of india okay so let me explain you that how this pytz package is extracting the time first let me show you another example so that you can believe me that this is showing the correct time so let me see for australia uh, victoria victoria and i'll also show you that how you can know the time zone names also okay so just wait for a second let me run this so this is the current time of australia okay so first let me explain you that how this is happening then i'll explain you that how you can get the time zones of different countries okay so first of all we have created a home variable in which the time zone is saved okay and then by using date time dot now we have extracted the current time 
of that specific time zone and then in this current time variable we are storing the hour minute and second format of the current time okay let me show you that how you can know what are the time zones of uh, your country or any country you want to know okay so we have already imported time so what we'll do is we'll just write for time in um, pytz dot all uh, time just a second time zones and then we'll simply print tz okay just a second not the windows key the z key let's save this and let's run our code okay and there you can see these are all the time zones that you can use in your code to get the time of that specific area okay so there you can see asia africa antarctica america and africa okay so you can use these time zones so let me remove this because this was just to explain you actually i'll not remove this one because uh, we'll be using this part of the code so i'll not remove this one okay so let's unstring this part and what we want is we want the current time of different time zones so above this one we want the current time zone of india okay so the current time of india is stored in this current time variable so we'll uh, display this into this uh, current time variable let's save this and let me show you first that how this will look there you can see the country name is india the time is for actually australia so first let me write this time for india only okay let me save this and run this again and there you can see it is 11 15 in india okay and there you can see that this is fixed this value is not changing because our function is called only once now let me show you that how you can make this uh, function run multiple times so what we'll do is we'll call clock dot and after every 200 second actually microseconds we want to run this times function so let's run this and there you can see after every 200 microseconds this function is repeating itself and hence we are getting the exact time of india now let's do the same for all the countries okay so i guess we have done first is india second is australia third is africa for timbuktu fourth is new york okay so let's run this and there you can see this is our word clock showing the current time of different countries around the globe okay so i'm pretty sure that you're smart enough to just alter this gui and create a more freakingly awesome looking gui okay so this is me signing out but before signing out let me show you a glimpse of the next project that i have created which is the simulation of dice rolling using kinton so let me show you okay dice rolling let me run this and there you can see this is our kinta gui as usual let me press on this button and there you can see this is our two dice of ludo that you can choose and there you can see even if your dices are lost you can use this program to play ludo okay so this is the program that we'll be creating in the next video so make sure that you watch that video also okay so this is it and i'll meet you in my next lecture where we'll create this awesome gui okay so meet you there bye bye Hello Python programmers, so in this video I am going to show you that how you can create a dice rolling GUI 
using python so first of all let me show you that what is the final output that you can expect from this video so let me run this program okay so there you can see that this is our gui and if we click on this button this is the face of our dice let me click on this uh, button multiple times there you can see that the faces are changing okay so if the dice of your ludo or business is lost then you can use this gui to continue your game although it will be stupidity but still you can use this okay so first of all let's discuss that what is the package required for this project you only need kinter for this project which will be used to create this gui and as you already know that kinter comes pre-installed with python so we don't need to install that also okay so with this being said let's get to our editor and start writing our code okay so now we are into our editor so our first task is to import the required libraries which is first kinter obviously to create our gui and second is random because we are randomly selecting the numbers okay now let's create the kinter instance the kinter uh, gui instance then we'll define that what will be the geometry geo Metry. If you are a regular user, uh, sorry, regular viewer of my channel, then you must be familiar with these commands. Let's define that what will be the height and width of our GUI. Let's say that uh, it is uh, like 700 into let's say 450. Okay, you can experiment with this value if you want. Now, as you know, our GUI will have two basic component first is the button which will trigger the rolling of dice and second is the dice label itself okay so first let's create the label let's call this l1 so l1 is equal to label and then the first parameter is the gui instance and as you already know that we do not need to define that what will be the text because we will randomly select the number the font style is times uh, the size is let's say 260 you can select the size let's say 200 okay let's select the value as 200 you can define the value according to you okay and i guess this should be inside another brackets okay now we are not packing the label over here we'll pack the label inside the function okay so now let's create the button so uh, button not button it should be button and then the first parameter is as usual the gui instance second parameter is the text that will be displayed on our gui let's say uh, let's roll no okay and the third parameter is the command that this button will trigger let's say it trigger a function roll okay so now let's place our button so b1 dot place uh, it should be placed exactly at the top and exactly at the middle of our GUI so let's say at x axis which is the half of 750 oh, oh what is this z doing here it should be an x here okay so the exact half of 700 is 350 so it will be present at 350 of x and y is 0 because we want this at the top of our gui okay so now let's close our main loop should be root dot main loop should be dot here let's close this save this and run our gui and we are getting an error uh, because role is not defined yeah because we haven't defined our function role so let's define the function role and let's simply print something so that we can check whether the existing code is correct or not let's save this and run our program no i don't want to buy and there you can see this is our gui and the button is present exactly at the center 
actually it's not present exactly at the center because uh, the starting is present at the center but it's moving towards the right hand side so let's place this at let's say um, 330 yeah somewhat at the center now you can experiment with this value as you want you can even define that what will be the width of uh, this button by writing the width parameter here okay so you can use that parameter also okay so now let's work on this role function so that we can actually write the numbers on our dice so first of all let's create a number variable in which the list of all the ascii character of that string will be stored okay okay so now these are the ascii value for each of that numeric character like the number 3 is defined by this u2682 and the six number is defined by this u2685 okay so what else is left nothing actually we just need to config our label we'll config this and the text will be changed and actually we are doing some text formatting so we'll write an f here and actually it should be a dictionary inside and one parenthesis is missing i guess say hey, yep okay so now let's pack our l1 don't worry because i'll explain you once again that how this thing work okay so let me save this and run our program let's click on this button oh, 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 oh. just a second because these will have a backslash also these are unicode and unicode cannot exist without a backslash how could i miss this okay so why is this uh acting special actually i guess one eight is missing yep, yep 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 let's save this and run our program again and there you can see uh okay so number three is acting weird so let's see what is the problem here okay so i have to pause the video because that error is not going i mean that bug is really pissing me off because it's not going even when we have done the exact same thing for others yeah there you can see that the three is printing just like normal but here three is acting weird and we have done same thing for both the dices they both are printing the random unicode characters of string but still sometimes it is acting weird and sometimes it's acting normal so uh so this i'm giving you as an assignment because really i was live coding in this video and i don't know how this error showed up because previously when i have created this project it was acting normal but now this error is coming up which is pretty strange so this is an assignment for you if you are able to crack this then then comment down below because i also want to know that what is the thing that i am doing wrong okay so this is it and i'll meet you in my next lecture where hopefully i'll create a program without any bug okay so meet you there bye bye